It's been 112 years since FB's inaugural president and founder, Harry Doherty, presented the Doherty Cup to winners Carlton United in 1909. Carlton United sadly no longer with us, but the Doherty Cup remains and how impressive it is. Hello and welcome to today's Doherty Cup final. Four long months wait in the making. It is Hume City FC taking on Avondale FC. I'm Josh Parrish. With me today, my match day commentator and expert, Joey Lynch. Good to be here. Absolutely great to be here, Josh. When I heard you saying 112 years, I thought for a second you were going to say that's how long it's been since we've had a game here <laughs> um, in Football Victoria. It's certainly been a long time. Both of these sides booking their place in the final of the Doherty Cup, but it's absolutely so excited to be out here. The weather has turned it on. It's a perfect day for football. Cannot wait for what shapes as a really entertaining contest between two sides that, despite the break, have a bit of form coming into this one. Absolutely, and it's a huge chance for both sides to win major silverware. The first time Hume City lifted a major trophy was the Doherty Cup. The last time we played a final, back in 2019, with a 1-0 win over the Melbourne Knights. I think they're Avondale. somewhere around the back there. Yeah, just uh, on this impressive trophy here. And Avondale have the chance to do, this, do the same. Their first major piece of senior silverware would be this trophy, if they can get it done here today. Hume City season, fourth place in the league, second most impressive attack, second top goal scorer. They're uh, just hanging on Avondale's coattails. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, we've seen what they were able to do uh, throughout the regular season. Lethal in transition were Hume City. Just when they can get out in pace and absolutely just start running at teams, very few defences that can go with them. But as you mentioned, Josh, Second leading goal scorer, second most lethal attack because when they look up today at CB Smith Reserve, it will be the most lethal striker, the most lethal team looking back at them, won't it? Absolutely. It's an uh, impressive array of talent in that Hume City attack. The FFA Cup run came to an end on Wednesday night against Melbourne City, going down 1-0. Very respectable performance by a team well out of season. Indeed. I mean... Yeah, it's been an incredibly interrupted uh, FFA Cup lead-in for Hume City. I mean, they came back in the middle of lockdown, had to get special exemptions to even train, and then one player tested positive for COVID, and they all had to go into isolation for two weeks until they could get all those negative tests and come back out. So it's been an incredibly disrupted pre-season, but they did get a 3-1 win over Port Melbourne in the round of 32 to once again get through to the round of 16 of the FFA Cup. I mean... Hume City pretty much, you'd have to say it, them and Bentley, the, the cup specialists of Victoria in the past decade or so, and certainly weren't shamed against Melbourne City. Yes, Marco Tilio misses perhaps a penalty early that could have changed the game, but Hume only went 1-0 down to a Matthew Leckie strike, and they had their chances, especially around the first 15 minutes of the second half, pushing hard, went ever so close around the hour mark to equalising, and... Goals change games, Josh. Who knows what could have happened from there. But alas, not to be. But it is, does give them a bit of a lead into this game. Well, the FFA Cup also serves as the qualifying rounds for the semi-finals of the Doherty Cup. And back in the Doherty Cup semi-final, Hume City secured their place here today by beating South Melbourne 3-2 in dramatic fashion. But the hero that day with two goals was Andy Brennan. He's gone off and joined South Melbourne, the team they beat. I know. I mean, he must have impressed the uh, Hellas Power Brokers <laughs> for them to bring him in so quickly after that one. I think he might have had it. Uh, the, no, sorry. The man that provided one of his assists in that game as well, Danny Dixon, he's gone as well. He's mm. gone back to WA. And perhaps that could be said to be one of the themes of Hume City coming into this game. Yes, they've been able to bring some talent in, which we'll get to in a second, Josh. But they have certainly lost a pretty fearsome collection of players as well. Just going through it for you, those Andy Brennan, Danny Dixon, we mentioned. James Brown left for Nunna Wadding City mid season. Pat Langlois, play with A League experience, has gone to South Melbourne as well. And their captain, their leader, Big Mike, Michael Weir, has finally got his A League chance with the Newcastle Jets, which gives a 17 year old the chance to step up today, Joey. Well, I mean, he's had a bit of experience at least. When he made his senior debut, he was a 16 year old against Port Melbourne in the FFA Cup. He's had a birthday since then, but you really cannot overstate the potential impact of losing Big Mike, Michael Weir. He's been a prohibitive favourite for the MPL Victoria Goalkeeper of the Year pretty much every season that he's been down here since moving down from Queensland. And really, it's a much-deserved A-League men's shot that he's received with the Newcastle Jets. But, yeah, big shoes to fill both literally and figuratively. That's Lucas Trenkowski who starts in goals today 
for Hume City. Let's talk about the Inns, though. They've been busy in the transfer market, Hume City, to get ready for this one and their FFA Cup fixtures as well. Brandon Lawton comes in from Melbourne Victory. Paul Quoll and Noel Bernada from Danny Nong Thunder and Ali Turgut from Whittlesea Rangers. Bernada, the third top scorer in the league. So they're adding more goals to that lineup. He's on the bench today. What kind of an impact could he provide once he comes on? Well, I mean, we saw what type of impact he can provide in the round of 32 clash with Port Melbourne. He came on, uh, got there, got a goal there as they finished over the top to win 3-1 after it was 1-1 heading into the final stages. Did, unfortunately, in case of mistaken identity, get sent off later in that game, but that was rescinded. And he did start midweek uh, against Melbourne City bit interesting that he started. He wasn't supposed to, but then another name that mentioned there, Kual. Thanks to traffic, he only got to the game 15 minutes before kickoff, so Bernada took his place in the starting lineup. Kual got here on time today, so he's back in the starting 11, but Noel Bernada, I mean, the Argentinian attacker, pretty handy addition to have off the bench. Absolutely. Well, uh, a bit of drama pre-game, trying to get the Hume City lineup sorted. Some late additions there. Uh, let's talk about Avondale. They were in pole position for the title when the season was sadly abandoned. Uh, seven points clear of Oakley, looking like nailed on favourites to at least be premiers. Uh, but Major Silverware, despite their impressive performances in the last few years, has eluded them. Indeed. I mean, perhaps Hume could somewhat sympathise with Avondale, given that they were the l runaway league leaders, well, as much as one can be a runaway league leader after five rounds in 2020 when the season was cancelled. So we've got two t teams out there that really wouldn't be the biggest fans in the world of COVID-19, but really this would have to loom, as you could hear pre-game as we were listening to the Avondale players just getting pumped in the rooms. They are well up for this one. They know the potential ramifications of this. Finally a chance to lift some silverware. Finally a chance to make some history. And also, in a way, give them a real big boost ahead of their yet-to-begin FFA Cup uh, national stages campaign, which, a bit weird, it hasn't started yet, but they're already in the round of 16. Yeah, free pass. Devonport strikers sadly unable to fulfil the fixture due to the COVID travel restrictions from Tasmania. So Avondale get a bye. That means they haven't played a competitive game in over four months. Just how rusty would these players be coming into a really high-stakes game? Well, I mean, I guess there's two ways to look at that, really, isn't there? We, they have had a series of pretty impressive, uh, friendly matches in the lead-in, playing some NPL sides that are just returning to their pre-seasons, but also, importantly, playing a few A-League men's sides in the lead-in. Now, we know A-League men's sides, they're not going to go full bore against uh, an NPL side in a pre-season friendly, but it is a chance to test yourself against some real quality uh, opposition players playing against Melbourne City, the likes of Jamie McLaren, Matt Leckie, Andy Naboot for the defenders going up against Curtis Good and Roston, Roston Griffiths and Nuno Raish for the attackers. So a chance for them to get some action in, but then, as you said, Josh, there's nothing that can actually replicate a competitive football match with something on the line, be it points or a trophy. So that is going to be something really important to watch today, especially in those first five to ten minutes. Does Avondale have rust? And does Hume, having played midweek, catch them early? It's the rust versus rest debate coming into this one. Avondale yet to play MPL 1 or A-League opposition on their FFA Cup run. They beat North Geelong and Pasco Vale uh, to get into the round of 16, followed by that bye against Devonport. In the Doherty Cup semi-finals, though, convincing fashion defeated Port Melbourne 5-1 on a cold night at ABD Stadium with a four-goal explosion in the second half. A hat-trick from the star man, Stefan Valentini. When this team turn it on, there's not many sides that can keep up with them. Yeah, when this team turns it on, and in particular that man you mentioned, Stefan Valentini, when he turns it on, was the leading goal scorer in NPL Victoria this season when it was unfortunately abandoned due to COVID. And when he's on, very, very difficult to stop the Perth-born striker. He did trial with Perth Glory during the off-season as well, so he has been on the radar of A-League men's sides in the not-so-distant past, and really, he's the man that you're going to... If you're going to back a first goal scorer or a leading goal scorer in this one, he'd be very short odds for it, I imagine. Pretty impressive array of talent on the park for both sides today, Joey. Is there anyone you've got an eye on with uh, view to a possible opportunity in the professional leagues? I mean, there's a 
players on both sides of the park that really, I mean, we've just mentioned Stefan Valentini, there's Yusuf Ahmed as well uh, for uh, uh, the Avengers, Yitay Towns is in there, Liam Boland, it feels like, has been on the precipice of an A-League men move for years now, much to his chagrin, he hasn't got one yet, and then you look at the likes of Hume City over there, um, Josh Bingham is a former A-League men's star himself, and they're bringing in a lot of young players from their academy to plug the gaps. So, really, I mean, if you were looking for a potential advertisement for a national second division, this game might serve as one of your best examples of the talent that is out there and the talent that can fill it if they are given the opportunity. Let's talk about the matchup then. The last two times these teams met, or the last time they met, was a three-all draw in round 11 back at Avenger Park in May. Very exciting game. A 3-1 lead for Hume up until stoppage time. But then two long balls from Avondale, two late goals. They've shown some character this season, coming back from deficits. Is this the mental fortitude that maybe they've been lacking in the big games? Oh, I mean, that is another one of the big questions. You can compare them perhaps in a way to Melbourne City. Uh, the big question for Melbourne City during the last A-League men's season was they had that fearsome collection of talent. They had the ability to score goals, but when it came down to the big moments, the big games, would they fire or would they wilt? Well, we saw last campaign that Melbourne City were able to get it done, and now today Avondale have a chance to finally get that monkey off their back. They've come so close so many times before. Is this the day where Avondale finally adds a major piece of silverware to that trophy cabinet at the Reggio Calabria Club? You have to think there's goals in this game. But Avondale, with that direct approach they took for their uh, equalisers in that, that's, that fixture, not usually typical of their strategy, playing hopeful long balls forward and waiting for a mistake. Well, I mean, it, it's the type of game that really, if you Hume coach Nick Hegarty, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed that he had any hair on his head <laughs> after that one. Just long balls. I guess it is just the classic type of football when you're down, oof, some long balls, hope you get lucky. Avondale did get lucky on that day, but you are right, Josh. That isn't their normal game. They do like to try to play football when you've got the talent that they've assembled down here at an NBL Victoria level. It's almost incumbent upon you to do that type of thing just because when it goes right, which it has so often for Avondale in the past few years, it is very, very, very difficult to stop. So hopefully, I'm imagining that we will see that again. It should create a bit of an interesting dynamic. As we mentioned, Hume are a side that likes to hit teams on transition, so it could be a situation where Avondale will happily accept the ball and Hume will readily allow them to have it in the hope that they can get out quickly and get some long balls forward to their oh-so-lethal frontman. Well, enough input from us. Let's go to the coaches. Joey spoke to Nick Hegarty a few moments ago. Uh, defeat to Melbourne City in the FFA Cup midweek. First things first, how have the boys pulled up after that one? Uh, yeah, we think, we think they're doing all right. Obviously a few uh, sluggish bodies in the, the two days after. So today will be uh, interesting, really. You, you know how they're going to be five, ten minutes into the game, but these are the conditions that we've got to deal with, so we'll uh, pretty much put out the same team, which will be good for a bit of consistency, so hopefully we'll take the momentum that we kind of had in that second half against City into this game. Well, looking at the team sheets, just one change from that side uh, that ran out against City. Bernardo onto the bench, Kual into the starting uh, lineup. That sense of continuity, you guys have ha played a couple of competitive fixtures. You've done the warm up at, compared to Avondale that have trained, but they haven't played a competitive fixture yet. Does that continuity and warm up games help you guys out? I think, in terms of the way I like to do things, yes. Um, probably poorly, uh, Kual would have played Wednesday night if the traffic in Melbourne and not being that crazy with the weather and stuff but um, again I think this game's got so many positives and negatives from both sides they've had three weeks to just prepare for us whereas we've had a cool down session to prepare for them um, they're coming in fresh we've had a game but we've been training for longer and had competitive games so there's um, there's lots of ups and downs and, and fundamentally finals just end up with generally a, a moment of quality or a mistake so We've just got to make sure we deliver our style, try and control the game in the way that we want to control it, and 
then hopefully let our players do the business. And Kual and Bernardo, they are two new additions. They weren't with you during the NPL season, and conversely, you are missing a couple of figures from that uh, campaign, like Andy Brennan um, and Danny Dixon, who's gone back to WA. What does that do for this side, losing some players, gaining another? Has that been difficult for you to cope with as a coach? I think right at the start, it was the question marks that we we're asking ourselves and the boys that have come in have been have been fantastic. We we kind of went 50-50 in terms of replacing a few boys for next season as well as bringing a couple of the youngsters through to give them an opportunity in this kind of short mini season um, leading into next season. So, so far we've had success in it in both um, Paul Quall, Brendan Lawton have come in and, and done great with um, Birhan Ball and Lucas Tankowski in the goal as well. Um, those kind of uh, relationships between everybody are continually growing, so next year we'll be stronger for it. Um, and Bernardo's a bit of a different situation, which we've both been kind of helping each other for now, and whether that'll lead to something, we'll see. But, um, yeah, we'll we'll see. Again, we're playing against a team we've been together for long periods. Um, they've got vast amounts of talent. Um, so we'll we'll see what they come up with. And obviously, as a coach, who likes to know everything about an opposition and and thinks that they can create things out of that when you're playing against somebody and know nothing. Um, I've seen limited games. It's an interesting proposition. So, again, it's just us delivering our style, our performance, and then adapting as we go. Well, it is a cup final, and Hume, you are the defending champions. Going to get going to go back to back today? That'd be that'd be nice. Not to plan, um, but it's been a, a long time since uh, 2019, and. Uh, even a long time since the semi-final, so well, um, there has to be a winner, and I, uh, we'd like it to be us for sure. So, well, Nick Hegarty, thanks for giving up a bit of your time to join us ahead of the 2021 Doherty Cup final. Confident his new signings are gelling, and well, impressive performance against Melbourne City. Now, let's hear from Avondale's head coach, Soren Markovsky, who I spoke to a bit earlier. I'm here with Avondale head coach Zoran Markovsky. Zoki, it's a big day for the club. Yeah, it's a massive day, Josh. Um, our boys have been really looking forward to this game since we come back to training and we've been going for about seven, eight weeks. And It's a one-off game where you can't redeem yourself the week after, but we're comfortable going into the game and really backing ourselves to get a good result. A debutant goalkeeper in a cup final, it's a, it's a big day for my and mine. Yeah, it is a big day. The kid's a good keeper. He's been training at Melbourne Victory, trying to get a youth contract, and also Western United is interested. And we back all our young kids, and Mayan's one that we're going to back today, and we're going to really support him, and hopefully he puts up a good show today. We know you always play attacking football today. No exception in the big game? Yeah, we, you know the style we play, Josh. We, we love going front foot forward, and Hume were really good against Melbourne City the other day and put up a good show for an NPL team against an A-League team. And the Avondale way is full on. We're just going to go full on today and we'll be organised and well set because we're playing to get into a good outfit in Hume City. I saw Stefan Valentini in the change rooms looking uh, high spirited as usual. 14 goals in the league. He's built for these occasions, no? Yeah, Steph's one of um, many in the Avalon team that love big games and today's a massive game for our club and for those boys in that change room. They're really looking forward to the challenge against Hume and hopefully they step up today and really put in a good performance. Zoran, thanks so much for giving us your time pre game. Best of luck. Appreciate it, Josh. Thanks. Avondale's head coach, Soren Markovsky, acutely aware of the significance of this occasion for him and for the club. Let's run through the team lists for Hume City. With 17-year-old Lucas Trankovsky in goal, new signing Brandon Lawton as a midfield playmaker, and the second top scorer in the league, Josh Bingham, the number nine up front. What do you make of this lineup, Joey? Well, it's one that has continuity. As we said before, it's pretty much the same. Well, it is the same 11 that started against Port Melbourne in the round of 32 and swapping out Kual for Bernardo. It is the same uh, side that played Melbourne City midweek. So if it is possible to have a sense of continuity after pretty much a four-month layoff, Hume City have it coming into this one. And you mentioned in there, Lyleton, he is a new arrival, but anybody that saw him during the A-League men with Melbourne victory will know that he's got a bit of something special. He's very versatile as well, so who knows? He'll start in the midfield. He'll know where he'll end up. I'm looking for some X-Factor from Mitch Cooper today. 
who is his best mate, James Brown, who scored the winner last time out in the yeah, Dockney Cup final. Football. Yeah, and uh, he's, uh, he's always got something special in his locker, Mitch Cooper, with A-League experience under his belt as well. Youngest captain in A-League men history. Yeah, <laughs> famously so. Let's go to the Avondale team list, where they've got a debutante between the sticks. That name really draws the eye. Mayan Mayan, what a huge occasion for him with both Avondale's first choice goalkeepers out through injury or uh, illness. It's going to be very interesting, Josh. We've spent most of this pre-game show talking about how good both sides' attacks are. Mm. And we've got a 17-year-old making his third ever senior start versus another youngster making his first ever senior start in this one. So no pressure, lads, but <laughs> uh, your team's success might rest on your glove in your gloved hands. Indeed. Well, uh, Scott Healy is the captain. They've had a little re a shift at the back with Scott Healy moving to right back from his usual central role. James Riccobene comes in with Dylan Jacoupi injured. Elsewhere, the veteran Jonathan Germano will play no part, injured as well. No Stefan Zinni, but Avondale have such attacking depth. That front three, Valentini, Boland, and of course, uh, that man Yusuf Ahmed. He brings his own fan club along. Know, hopefully, we'll, we'll see them around here today. And Boland's well... Anybody that's a fan of the FFA Cup knows that Liam, but what Liam Boland can do when the spotlight is on him, as Michael Cockrell famously once called, Boland! And we will see if the man, the Spurs fan, has what it takes to produce something special and perform in a Cup final, unlike Spurs. If I had a word of advice for Lukas Trankowski, I'd say don't stray too far off your line, even if the ball's at the halfway mark. Yeah, Liam Boland will be searching and... He does, he's not a man lacking in confidence, is he, Liam Boland? Personally, I'm hoping Yusuf Ahmed gets on the score sheet. He has his own fan club. But a quick prediction before we go to the game. Avondale have another game coming up in the future. We've seen how right and ready they are for this one. Hume have a three-week break coming up. Might be a bit, uh, just a bit off it. I'm going to go with Avondale 2, Hume 0. I'm going to go for a barn burner, Joey. 3-2 to Avondale in extra time. Thanks so much for joining us for the pregame. And stick with us for a barn burner of a game, two attacking sides, a Doherty Cup final, and this impressive trophy to take home.
And here they come, ladies and gentlemen. Hume City and Avondale FC set to do battle for one of the oldest trophies in Australian football, one of the best looking trophies in Australian football, the Doherty Cup. Real big game feel in this one. Thank you for joining us on the Football Victoria Facebook page or the Football Victoria YouTube page. If you missed our free game show, oh, let's pause for the anthems. As the last bars of Advance Australia Fair ring out, I will pick up where I left off. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the Football Victoria Facebook page or the Football Victoria YouTube page. If you missed our pre-game show, my name is Joey Lynch. Thank you for joining us, and it is my absolute pleasure to be joined by Josh Parrish. Josh, we're up here on the Cherry Picker at CB Smith Reserve. What do you make of the conditions heading into this one? Yeah, uh, a little rickety up here, but... Uh for the players, an absolutely beautiful day for football. Just a nice cooling breeze coming through. Sun's out, sun's shining, fans in attendance. It's a, it's a perfect day for football. Absolutely perfect conditions indeed out here in Faulkner. We gave you a bit of a snippet into the starting 11s during the pregame show, but we'll run you through them fully now. So for Hume, as mentioned, the young 17-year-old in goal, number 20, Lucas Trankowski, in front of him, number two, Berhan Elibol. Number six, Aiden Gardner. Number seven, Paul Kual. Number nine, Josh Bingham. Really the man to watch for Hume City there up front. Number 12, Mark Ocheng. Scored an absolute banger of a goal against Port Melbourne in the round of 32. Number 13, Matt Lazaridis. Number 14, Mitch Cooper. Number 15, Hayden Tennant. Number 16, one of the new boys, Brandon Lawton. Number 18, Ben Bowler. That's the two sides. Switch ends for Avondale. Another young lad making his first ever senior start in goal, Mayan Mayan. And in front of him, number two, Scott Hillier. Number three, James Riccobene. Number five, Matt Reed. Number nine, Liam Boland. Number 11, Yusuf Ahmed. Number 13, Yitzhak Towns. Number 14, Blake Carpenter. 18, Christian Trajeski. Number 22, Avondale's danger man, Stefan Valentini. And the midfielder, number 25, the Argentinian, Mario Barcia. Barcia is an uh, impressive acquisition mid-season. He's really added to some stability in that defensive midfield position that Avondale sorely needed. They were leaking too many goals, and uh, he really sets the tempo. Should be interesting player to watch in this one, the central Cordoba youth, was Barcia, as it will be Avondale, getting set to kick us off in this one. The very aesthetically pleasing blue versus red matchup. Avondale in their blue kit will be kicking from left to right of your screen in the opening half of this one. Hume in their famous all red kits will be kicking from right to left. Boland standing over the ball, gets us underway and the 2021 Doherty Cup final is underway and it is immediately a turnover as that one sails over the head of Yusuf Ahmed and it will end up in the hands of Matt Lazaridis out here on the left for Hume. Josh, what do you think are the keys for Avondale in this one? What do they need to do to shut Hume down? Well, I think they need to press appropriately and, and stop Hume's pattern play. You can see the way that Bowler drops between the centre-backs in the early stages of possession. They have some well-rehearsed rotations with their attacking midfielders, their wingers playing quite narrow and, and combining with the strikers. Avondale just needs to keep their shape, keep their discipline and track those runners. Ilya gets us going for the Avengers, looking for Boland. He'll nod it on in the direction of Yusuf Ahmed. Battling in there with Ellie Bolt. Comes away with it, does Lazaridis and knocks the ball forward speculatively in the direction of Kual, Paul Kual. But an early touch for Mayan Mayan, and he's really got to settle the nurse quickly, doesn't he, Josh? If Avondale are going to get something from this one. 
Yeah, first ever game in a cup final. It's uh, all set for him to be the hero if he can. Yeah, stuff legends are made of. Early touch under pressure. And Josh Bingham, welcome to senior football, Mayan Mayan. But Josh Bingham has gone down and he looks to be in quite a lot of pain. It's just both players kicking the ball at the same time and Bingham's twisted his knee. So talked about Mayan Mayan having the chance to be a hero on his first team debut. He almost became the villain immediately there under pressure. Didn't get rid of the ball in time. But now Josh Bingham has come off worse from that collision. And that could be a huge blow for Hume City if he can't return to action. Absolutely. A massive headache for coach Nick Hegarty very, very early on. Josh Bingham is their leading scorer. He had 13 goals during the NPL season. I think he added another four during their FFA Cup campaign. And if he is not able to continue just minutes into this one, it will almost force a complete technical reshuffle mm. from him, won't it? I mean, who do they stick up front? I guess Bernarda off the bench is the obvious choice. As we can see, the Hume bench is already moving into action. Nick Hegarty pacing up and down with his hands behind his backs. Trainers checking. Hopefully just a bit of a jar mm. for Bingham and something he can run off. Physio going through the, the dreaded ACL tests. Fingers crossed for Josh Bingham here. It would be a real shame to lose one of the star attractions so early. Absolutely. You'd hope it's nothing serious because, I mean, any long-term injury for Bingham in this one would effectively rule him out for a, a large portion of the 2022 season as well. Absolutely not. Well, he's back on his feet, just about, Josh Bingham. I guess the you thing is, is, can he change direction? Can he move laterally? These sort of injuries, you can go in a straight line. He seems very ginger, in a lot of pain, so... If you are Nick Hegarty, do you give him some time to try to run it off so early on? I, I think you do just go down to 10 for a few minutes, as they will now. Don't want to make the sub prematurely. You might just need a few minutes to walk it off. And perhaps now a chance for Avondale to use that attacking power that they have with an extra man on the pitch. So he's going to bust up to the left and looking for Trojewski over the top. Marked by Tennant, does well. Goes down. No foul given. Tennant does well to play it upfield. Cool. Turns it around the corner. Switch to Lazaridis. Comes under pressure from Ahmed. And the ball just calms things down. Finds his captain. And he's set Lazaridis screaming for the ball in some space on the left. So goes to Ellie Ball again. So Hume content to just maybe knock it around and keep possession until they can maybe get 11 men back on the field, Josh. No, they go long. But to nobody in particular, and James Riccobene will gratefully watch that one roll over the line for a goal kick. I think we're seeing some early nerves here from both sides. It's a turnover that didn't need to happen. He was under no real pressure, Hayden Tennant. That's the knock on him. Is he good enough on the ball? He's a ferocious tackler and a great defender, but he's not always that confident in possession. Ellie Ball, on the other hand, some beautiful footwork inside. Tech is there from the young lad after some good work by Cooper as well. And it is a change at centre back. They were playing Jordan Maricic in that position, but he's not amongst the squad today. So Ellie Ball gets the call up. And looking over there at the corner, Josh Bingham looks like he's going to be having his knee taped up. So it looks like he will try to resume there as Kuol goes down under the challenge from Rika Banay and wins his side a free kick. Easy decision for Adam Bavka. Just a lazy leg from James Riccobene. Not a necessary foul. It's a disappointing one to give away, but it's in quite a central position and a long way out. So I think Avondale will be fairly confident of defending this. Well, the, the wind is at the back of Hume in the first half, so proper contact. Goalkeeper making his first ever start at senior level. Maybe you do want to try your luck. Absolutely. This is a chance to... Test my and my, and again after that nervous early touch that led to the Bingham injury. See Aiden Gardner standing over the ball. Signed from Bentley Greens at the start of this season. And Bingham rejoins the fray. So you can see that right leg though heavily taped up. So that will be something to watch as this game goes on. But just the presence of Bingham, just the threat he brings, will give the defenders something to think about. Gardner goes for goal and he's going to put it just over the bar and he was wanting to test Mayan Mayan there. 
was a brilliant effort. I wasn't sure about the Avondale wall there. They had the tallest man on the outside. I think Boland should have been standing in the other man's position and stay with play. Now coming through, chance for Bingham. He'll play to Cooper and then straight at Mayan. Mayan, first save of the game for the young goalkeeper. But that wall positioning, Josh, maybe a case of young goalkeeper not ordering his defence around like a veteran keeper might. Now Yusuf Ahmed trying to burst into a bit of space. Lawton trying to give chase. Ahmed gets it to the byline, brings it back. Trying to find a teammate. Lurking there. He's Boland. Turn around, just play it in the long shot. Coming in there from Barcia, but collected by Trinkowski for his first save of the game. It's lovely footwork from Ahmed. He's so comfortable in those tight spaces. A bit of magic on the byline to knock it over the defender's head and take it on the other side. He had teammates in the area. There was a free player if he could have found one, but a little chip straight to a Hume City defender and they had to settle for a long-range effort in the end out of Avondale. Now, another long ball played forward and Rick Abene again. This time couldn't take his time with it because he had Bingham for company, but the result is the same. A goal kick for Avondale, taken quickly by Mayan Mayan. Matt Reed plays it forward and it's going to find its way out to the right flank. Boland trying to hold it up, managed to turn Ellie Ball. And it was promptly collected by Hayden Tennant. Interesting to see how Avondale set up here. Who are they comfortable to leave with the ball? Who do they want to press? And how high are they going to engage? After such a long break between competitive fixtures, you have to imagine fitness will be an issue, so they may want to conserve energy and not press all the way up to the final third. I think some of the Avondale fans in attendance were appreciative of that ball that went out for an Avondale throw-in, and now you take Towns on it. He'll play it out to Yusuf Ahmed on the rise. Coming inside again, running at Lazaridis, looking for the byline. Cuts it back, blocked away. Gardner coming under pressure, trying to snake his way through. Will only go so far as Carpenter. He played inside the bus here. Touch it, cut back inside by Trajeski. Rooted clear, but Hume under siege here early on. Trying to clear it out. Kual does well, turns inside. Trying to use that speed to get forward. Shrugging off one challenge, brought down under the second. And the referee Adam Babco waves play on. One of the best referees in NPL Victoria didn't think that one was a foul. And he's in a great position too. I think it's spot on. All ball and Quoll went over the top. Jeski lets it go. Then he gets it back from Boland. Trying to slide it out there onto the left. And in the end, Trankowski, the young goalkeeper. Discretion, the better part of Valor. And he will put it out for a throw in on the right. Didn't think Trajeski needed to attempt that ball first time. He could have taken a touch. He needs a shout from a teammate to say, you've got a little bit of time. Just take a touch, keep dribbling, engage a defender first before you try and put it around the corner. Towns tries to flick it upfield in the direction of Boland. Boland will watch it go beyond him. And Trentkowski collects in front of the Hume City fans that have set up shot behind his goal. Watches it run long and then gets it back. Wind's really picked up from our elevated commentary position here. I'm not sure what it's like at pitch level. Well done, well done. Flags are fluttering as that one is played long in the direction of Kual, headed away. Hillier just loops it upfield in the direction of Arkham as Ben Bowler for company. Competition for it, and it will be an Avondale throwing. Avondale finding a foothold now. It was all Hume to start off with with that high press. Attacking at pace. Lazaridis steals it away from Boland. Boland's ball over the top, giving Bingham something to chase. Mayan Mayan has to come. Brings it inside his penalty area and collects. It's always a sharp intake of breath. You almost sense from the Avondale bench every time the ball gets near Mayan Mayan after that early hiccup. Especially with Bingham charging him down at full bore. Ochin comes away with that one. Valentini still trying to work his way into this one. He's had a bit more football than many of his teammates, given that he was trialling with Perth Glory. Yet to get into the game, Stefan Valentini. They just can't get in the ball so far. It's all been down Ahmed's flank. Final 
couldn't tell whether that is a deliberate strategy on the part of Coach Zoran Markovsky. And now, chance here to break. Trajewski coming forward and then he just runs straight into Ellie Bolt. Gets a second chance. Ahmed. Safe as to houses. Hayden Tennant getting across to put it out for corner kick. That's Ute Towns for you. Doesn't look like the toughest customer in central midfield from a defensive perspective, but he's nippy and he anticipates the play very well. He just picked Ben Bowler's pocket there and Avondale were able to spring in transition. Now James Cabernet, the left back, ambling over. We'll send an in-swinging corner in for this one. Both coaches trying to organise their sides. In towards the danger area. Oh, Cheng headed it clear. And they'll get a second go. Play back into the middle of the park. Carpenter. And look up and just splay a ball across to the left. Avondale knocking on the door early. Found. And out to Marcia. Chance for Valentini on the left. Step over. Beats his man. Can't beat the second. Good cover from Mike Cheng. It is rolled. Brandon Lawton effortlessly there, Stefan Valentini. The first glimpse of quality we've seen from him this afternoon. Mark Ocheng, for one of many former A-League men players running around there today. An Adelaide United player. Good defensive effort from Kuol. Wins his side, a throw in there, deep in their defensive right flank. Plays a nice little one-two to get around Trajewski. Still going, is Ocheng, and then he's going to go down, and that will be a free kick. Not much Yito Towns could do there with the momentum that Ocheng had built up, but it's always given as a foul, that sort of challenge. Ben Bowler, looking up. Go, go, go. Doesn't like what's in front of him, so I'll go back to Trenkowski. Does well to keep it in. And then Rick Abene sends it straight back and it bounces off one of the famous light posts here at CB Smith Reserve. Thank goodness we're broadcasting from this side of the field, otherwise. Oh. Interrupted views, perhaps, is the best way to charitably put it. Hey! Seagulls making their presence known here at CB Smith Reserve. We're definitely not at Amy Park. Case team is in action, so maybe some hot chips on offer. <laughs> Interesting hearing the Hume Actives whistling Avondale in possession, trying to put them off. They haven't kept that up for the 90 minutes, uh, which is probably a relief to all concerned. I did have a big game this week. Mm. Might be a bit tired. Yeah. Got to manage your minutes as, a, as an active fan. Towns turns his man well. And that gave him time. Ball perhaps was intended for Ackman, but if it was, nowhere near him. And Trinkowski collects. Tennant has time and then just turns back inside under pressure from Boland. Has work to do, Lazaridis, to keep it in, but he does. Lawton in the middle of the park. Lawrence Kowal can turn. And then you take Towns. Strong challenge in the middle of the park. Sends back Hillier's high looping ball. And straight back again, Trajewski. Really impressive sliding challenge from Ute Towns. He's won the ball a couple of times here. He's up for the contest, the physical one that is. Just want to see him on the ball a little bit more. This is Buckman. Trying to beat his man, instead he'll be dispossessed. Cool. As a readies. First touch with the outside of his boot, and then he's going to go down heavily. Under the challenge from Scott Hillier. Scott Hillier didn't like it, but it will be a free kick. 
Avondale captain with a few disparaging words after Lazaridis drew the referee's attention to the infringement with a bit of a shriek. It's a veteran manoeuvre. So the Hume having a bit of joy moving up to the halfway line, but then once they do, they're immediately swarmed. And more often than not going backwards and then shooting the long ball forward, which they'll do again. And it's probably sent clear by Scott Hillier. Zarides, ball in his hands on the halfway line. Looped forward, Bingham trying to get underneath it. He'll give chase though and keep it in. Bingham to Lazaridis. Looks for the byline, whips it in. Players arriving, oh, Cheng. Snuck in there from his position at right back, but the volleyed effort goes over the bar. Breaking pass, I think it was Maricic sprayed that one to Bingham, worked out well. Initially, I saw Mitch Cooper offering for it, and they, they haven't been hitting that pass to feet too often. They've been going more over the top down the channels. Gardner. That's Kuol on the left, uses him, another ball in, and this one is cleared away by Hillier. He would be very happy with how the game's gone so far, I suspect. The knock pick up by Josh Bingham, notwithstanding. He seems to be right as rain. Now a chance for a corner kick to put the young goalkeeper under, under pressure. You'd have to think they're going to crowd him on this one. Bowler, Bingham, Qual, all in the six-yard box. Ella Ball about to join them as well. Goes towards the far post, and in the end, it's going to beat everybody. And Peyton Tennant unable to keep it in. See, I think that's a wasted opportunity to float one in there and force my and mine into action. It's a let off. Towns faints and turns. Carpenter. Heavy touch off the chest there of Valentini. Enables Hume to come away with it. Ellie Ball. Jeski faints the pressure and then backs off. Okay. <laughs> See the shapes that Hume are trying to get in. They've got their wing backs pushing up to the halfway line and then the ball comes long over the top. The gardener, but he can't collect. Away with on where uh, initially did Trzeski, but then it's sent in now by Hume. Cooper from range takes a touch and a comfortable collection for Mayan Mayan. Valentini to Carpenter, back to Valentini. To the left side of players for Avondale, though, can't combine initially. Get another chance now. He's sold into pressure by the pass, and then he's crunched midfield. No advantage given by referee Adam that pass, so that will be a free kick for Avondale in the middle of the park. The Hume actives spring back into life. Trzeski has remained down. Medical attention required for the former Macedonian Youth International. Well, they've got a pretty capable replacement if Trzeski's done in here. Joey Katabian has been playing a deeper midfield role this season and would be pretty ideally suited to slot in as a playmaker if Trzeski's done something looks like to his arm or his shoulder. Katabian with three goals this NPL Victoria season, but we know he's capable of many more. Can really hit one from distance as well. When Joey Katabian strikes a football, that ball stays hit. Former Melbourne Victory and Brisbane Raw player, Katabian. 
Kind of a uh, very strong Melbourne victory youth side from a few years ago that mm. Leaf played a season in the top flight of the NPL at one point. All those A-League Youth Academy sides down in NPL 3 these days, including new newcomers Western United. Shows just how uh, strong the top divisions of NPL football are here in Victoria. When you look around the country, a lot of A-League Youth teams in the top flight or second division, but here in Victoria, they're battling for a promotion from the third. Marcio gets Mario, us going. Mario, get it back! To Bono. It's for Carpenter. Gets it back. There you go! Go, Jesse! Hey! Hey! Towns does well to keep the ball. No, not Towns. Use of Armand, sorry. That was, you'd say, Towns bursting through. She nutmegged his opponent there. It wasn't a clean nutmeg, but he managed to get past him. Boland turns. Kuwal comes in to apply the pressure. Boland strong to keep it. Tries to play it inside. Picked out by Hume. Bingham trying to hold the play up and then twist and turn and thread it through to Kuwal. Then he does very well to not only win it, but keep it in. Yutei Towns, you can hear the bench telling him to break. He looks up, splays it out to Valentini on the left, chest it down. Gets round one, and then the free kick awarded by referee Alan Burfkar. I think he was looking to see if the advantage was there, and then Hayden Tennant made certain that there was none. Came steaming in, said earlier he's a tough tackler, and you saw it there. Just went crunch. A few words with Valentini afterwards as well. Heavy in this one early. But the in choice that led to that situation was very early on. Brandon Lawton not pressing Ite Towns. He ran past him. He went for the wrong man. And it gave Towns the opportunity to turn under no pressure and drive forward. And that's maybe indicative of a, a player who hasn't had too long in the Hume City first team to get used to all the pressing triggers and the defensive structures. Send this one in. Faint, Rika Benet, left footed effort comes in and there was Reed there. Was waiting, but in the end, it's going to be offside, so unable to time their runs properly. Haven't they? I can't quite believe that decision. But... Boland certainly taking issue with it. Still giving his thoughts as play gets going once again. It's a difficult routine to pull off the, the feint. Sometimes it is successful because it moves the Hume City defence deeper because they're anticipating the ball coming in. But if you mess it up, that happens. And the ball to Lazaridis. Spray it up the field, looking for Kual. Can Kual keep it in? He can, but he'll do so under heavy pressure from Reed. That was out of bounds, to quote another commentator. The play continues. Line, line, line. Yes, son, yes. Give it to him. Very well there, has Trzeszewski to keep it in. Valentini coming across from left to right. Keeping possession, and then he'll thread it through to Yusuf Ahmed. Give a players in the middle, but Valentini had come mm. from the opposite wing, leaving nobody there to turn in the cross. But Avondale will keep it. Nutmeg! Ochek retired as it's whipped in. Bolands! Just wide. Well, Avondale turning it on. That was Harlem Globetrotter stuff. Two nutmegs in the one passage of play. As you mentioned, Valentini had come across to be involved in the build-up. Boland occupying the defender, and there was no one at the far post. But then Carpenter doing the hard yards from left back, getting forwards. It's a great chance. A very good effort. And the headed opportunity, but Liam Boland just high, just wide. Ominous signs for Hume, though. They are not going to want Avondale to click into a rhythm up front. And see now the vice like press as soon as Hume get near the halfway line comes into effect again. Strong challenge. 
Gardner, but then, oh, bit of afters here, bit of feelings. Valentini could well be booked for that. Another free Adam Bathgar. What's a word? Is it going to be a warning or a yellow card? Can you get away with a bit more in a cup final, perhaps? It looks like, indeed, Valentini will escape with a warning. A chest bump, no arms involved, but Gardner did stumble, which made me think Valentini could be booked for inciting. Hey. Comes forward, headed clear by Hume. The pressure coming in now from Boland. Well, had to turn and then just play it back to Trinkovsky. Lazaridis on the left will make its way to him. Hillier again applying the pressure. The Hume left back and the Avondale right back have been having a battle in this one. Lawton trying to bring it through and another crunching tackle from Yutay Towns. Springs Avondale forward quickly. Valentini, Boland on his left. Support on his right, looks for Boland. And the last second intervention from Hayden Tennant, oh so important in that one. Valentini just overhit that pass in front of Liam Boland and gave Tennant a chance. They had four on two there for a brief moment. The recovery was strong from the Hume City defenders and midfielders in getting back and providing some numbers, but Avondale should have done more with that. As we said, Yite Towns crunching ball-winning tackles time and time again building a reputation for himself as a midfield hard man. Cheng comes across and it's going to rebound off the right back's chest and go out for a Blake Carpenter to throw it. Towns again winning possession high up the park. He's everywhere. Holy big space for the counter. Looks like this one's going long. Boland's underneath it, can't win it. Sent back into the area by a Hume defender in the end. Hillier turning. And eventually Hume looked to clear their lines. Reed chests it back. Barcia, Riccobeno. Now play will stop here. As Yusuf Ahmed has stayed down after play. Moved on. Can't say I caught the source of that knock, but hopefully he can continue because he's been among the game's brightest stars so far with his ingenuity and trickery on this right-hand side. Avondale certainly recognising that as well, trying to use him as often as possible. We talked about Valentini needing to play his way into the game. Well, he hasn't had much opportunity. It's just because Yusuf Ardman has been playing so well on the other flank. From the Melbourne City youth player, Yusuf Ardman, won the Y League. Joe Pallet seed, he's at City. Playing alongside the likes of Daniel Alzani, Dylan Piraeus, Josh Cavallo, amongst others. And he's going to try to walk this one off. A bit of a thigh strain or a tight hamstring, not sure. Uh, we've already seen Josh Bing and tape it up. He continues, so maybe something similar for Ahmed. The problem is, though, for Avondale, unlike Hume, who are going to go on three-week Christmas holiday after this game, Avondale have a meeting with either Western United or Wellington Phoenix in the FFA Cup on the 17th. So, Hume maybe can just push that little bit extra, knowing that they've got some holiday time coming up versus Avondale. Game, huge game against the League Man opposition coming up as Boland's holding the play up. Excellent in the end, and then the long effort coming in from Valentini, but maybe just the radar off there from the NPL Victoria leading goal scorer for 2021. Bit of an understatement there, Joe. That one's gone out for a throw in. Absolutely shanked it, and Trajeski was none too pleased that Valentini chose to hit it first time. Cool, coming under pressure, just to shield it. Bombs aren't going off, ladies and gentlemen. That ball has just careened into the scaffold on which the effects mic is attached. We are not suffering a bombing raid out here in Faulkner. <laughs> Pressure coming in there from Yutai Towns on Tennant. And the ball is just looped forward. Holland sends it back. Trajeski for the byline, but an excellent challenge there. Uh, an alley ball had to be good with it, and he was. 
Substitution. So it looks like Yusuf Ahmed is not going to be able to run off his knock. And it will be Yazid Said coming on for Avondale. So that's really disappointing for the Avengers, Josh. It's a huge blow for the game, even for the atmosphere. We know Yui Ahmed's personal fan club, the U crew, they call themselves over in the far touchline. Yeah, absolutely skewing with that. He was playing so, so well. And he has to be withdrawn. But Yazid Said, great chance for a young player who's been in the Melbourne Victory ranks. Was the former Golden Boot winner for their Y League team back when we still had a Y League play. Long effort from Valentini, and that one will keep rising and go over the bar. Yazid Said, impressed in what is now known as the A League Youth Competition. Just really COVID really damaged the mm. careers of so many young players, the cancellations of NPL seasons, the cancellation of the Y League. Now Saeed buying his trade with Avondale. Cool. Sends it forward to Lazaridis. Yeah, that was a bit naughty there from Gardner. Mm. Probably didn't mean to do that. Pleading his case to Bavkar as Yitay Town stays down. They breed him tough in northern New South Wales. And Gardner with maybe a little bit of retribution on Yitay Towns following a bit of northern challenge South earlier. New, northern New South Wales on Tasmania. Right. <laughs> NPL Victoria, the great melting pot Indeed. of NPL football. Reed coming under pressure from Gardner. Right up field. That one flies over our heads here in the cherry picker. Not sure what he said about Beerhound early ball, but uh, it seems like he's aiming for us. He battling for it. In the end, it will be a throw in to the side in red. Reedy's trying to help the teammate. Gardner makes the run. He's ignored. He's inside the newcomer, I think. He is very composed on the ball. He's a player who the game seems to slow down for. And there was an incident in round one this season where he came off the bench. He was through on one on one with the Oakley goalkeeper with the game poised at 1 1. He chose to square it. And it was one of those no, no, yes decisions because it was a tap in for Valentini in the end. And I think only Saeed would have had the composure to do that. Was it Deepesh Mode that had the song Yes, No? <laughs> Briefly head in hands among the Avondale players and bench. What has he done? But turns out Valentini was steaming in from behind and presented with a tap-in. So good, good football brain on him. Cooper trying to bring it down, then whips it in. Ocheng's arriving late, but Valentini with an important intervention on the defensive end. Ocheng collects, though, twisting and turning, tries to slide it in and will eventually get to Bowler, to Bingham. Carpenter comes in and then you take Towns. We just send it back to his goalkeeper, Mayan Mayan. So if Mayan Mayan can get to half time with a clean sheet, Josh, he would have to do his confidence a world of good, wouldn't it? But he's not going to thank his teammates for passes like that. I honestly thought he just picked up a back pass, Mayan Mayan, but nobody seemed to notice, so maybe I'm mistaken. The play goes on, I, I, I Collective guess. Collective shrugs up here. <laughs> no VAR in the Doherty Cup. So, to watch that one back on the replay. No one seemed too bothered about it except me, so. Owens giving chase. Shoot by Tennant. Trying to hold him off using that big body of his. Goes down in the area. Never a penalty. Oh, another big collision. They're all happening here. Cooper cutting inside. Outside of the boot effort, giving something for Bingham to chase. Bingham into the penalty area, back onto his right boot, then trying to slide it across. Cooper was arriving, not sure if the cross would have been able to find him based off the trajectory off the boot. But it will be a corner kick. So I think Blake Carpenter over committing to the challenge there, and Gardner just rolled him pretty effortlessly. He's a big body, he can hold the ball up and... Carpenter just couldn't get around the corner and had a gamble that he perhaps shouldn't have. Yeah. 
Uh, Aiden Gardner heading over to take this one. Swinging right footed corner coming up. Watching there, it's going to get taken short. Lawton with time and space. He'll run inside, go from range, and then Boland has copped an absolute falcon on that one. He got in the way of the shot, but he's down now onto two knees. Josh, we had the perfect angle for that one. That could not have hit him any more flush in the forehead if he tried. Ouch. That doesn't tickle, and he might have saved a goal there. For all we know. He's going to wake up with a headache tomorrow. That was a stunning hit to Brandon Lawton there. Just, yeah, just teed it up. Sat beautifully for him. He swung straight through the ball. Perfect technique. And that one looked like it might have been rising into the top right corner. So Liam Boland taking one for the team. Maybe a drop ball situation here. It's Hume City in possession. So... They've got every right to... It's basically a set piece, isn't it? Yeah, to keep going. Here we Ocho. go. Tries to whip it in. Valentini closed it down. Barcia. It's forward. Bolands. Obviously not afraid to use his head immediately. Jeski, if it's Said. Keep it in. Those are ease for company. Plays it into the middle, looking for Valentini, cleared away by Ellie Bolt. And Lawton just boots it forward. Bingham chests it down. Exposed it for Reed. Does well to keep for back. And then they smash, as you might imagine, from that sound straight into the scaffolding here. <laughs> we should uh, give a little insight behind the scenes when there's a break in play as to why there's a, a mess of bars <laughs> next to the pitch. Had some inclement weather in Melbourne here recently and the scaffold we'd usually commentate from was in pieces so up on the cherry picker today with the camera we apologize for any resulting seasickness or deafening collisions with the effects mod. You can see here Hume really looking to get their wing backs up, but that might have them get caught out in transition. See the space for Said to run to, free of Lazaridis. Cuts it into the middle of the park, just... just let run by Trajeski. They're still battling. Bolands! Can't find a way through, maybe should have shot earlier. Barcia from range. Trenkowski doesn't have to do anything. And even before the ball went out of play, Trenkowski... Trinkowski was giving a bit of visceral feedback to, I'm not sure if it was his defence or the referee, but the 17 year old obviously no shrinking violet. Well, you have to be a bit inside to play goalkeeper, don't you? All the best ones are. And I, I think it's with him in mind that Avondale are attempting all these long range efforts. Young keeper, test him early, test him often, but unfortunately, most of them, Valentini, particularly the culprit, have been wildly off target as Hume make an unforced error. Again. Oh, another crunching challenge, but play will continue. Valentini straight at Trenkowski. Advantage being played here now, and Tate Towns getting to his feet, and it's all happening here. And now the yellow card comes in, so the advantage was played for that challenge. Hayden Tennant has gone into the book. It's just a crunching challenge on your take towns. It did spill out for Valentini. But he shot straight down the throat of Trenkowski. It's a tough decision for the referee because if you give the free kick, it's in a good scoring position. But Valentini flying through every chance he could have converted that. So I think Adam Bavka has actually played it perfectly. Va uh, advantage paid. And then back to give the yellow card for a bad challenge from Hayden Tennant. It's a long time to be carrying a yellow in a cup final, especially when you're a centre-half known for your no-nonsense approach when it comes to tackling. And with how often Avondale have been able to break quickly, you might need to use those professional fouls later in this game. Well, you can't now if you're Hayden Turner. Sliding challenge coming in from Bowler. Get a couple of dirt bikes for company and just look at that. It's all 
breaking off here. We've got handbags in multiple areas of the pitch. Pushing and shoving on the field. Dirt bikes going past us behind their camera position. Mad Max has broken out <laughs> in the 2021 Doherty Cup final. This is madness. So two spot fires. Maricic already on a yellow card confronting Valentini. There's a player on the ground. A lot for the match officials to sort out. And in the meantime, motorcycles doing wheelies behind the fence behind us. I guess someone just came in here. Hayden Tennant might be in a bit of trouble here. He's just Valen gone into the book for a yellow card. Valentini has already been warned. Well, there wasn't. Don't think it was Tennant that instigated that frack card that involved him. We had multiple frack cards. Difficult to keep track of everything. <laughs> I mean, it's exactly what you want if it's a cup final. Great for the neutral. I'm not sure how much Coach Nick Hegarty and Coach Zoran Monkowski appreciate it, though. There we go. So you take Towns, has gone into the book. Now Josh Bingham is being summoned. So I imagine he's about to get shown a bit of the yellow fabric as well. Indeed he is. So it's sort of something that Babcar probably had to do. He had to start producing these cards, otherwise he risked losing control of the game. I mean, he's done well. He's tried to let it flow, but... And you don't want to give a red card if you in the first half of a game like this if you can avoid it. Sometimes it's warranted, but looks like it was the incident off the ball that garnered the disciplinary action. And I think Bavka will have taken the lead from his assistants in that regard because you know he can't be in two places at once and he can't have eyes everywhere. So after all of that excitement. Hume will get us going again. Bowler oh, just loops it forward in the direction of Bingham. Carpenters just didn't really have eyes for the ball there, did he? It was all Bingham. He's been shoved into the fence for his troubles. I went to a Doherty, I went to a wrestling match and a Doherty Cup final <laughs> broke out. Oh, I messed up my delivery there, didn't I? One wonders what Maya and Mayan is thinking just in his first ever senior start watching all of this unfold in front of him. So this is what senior football is all about. I don't think he's even ever been on the bench for a senior team game as far as I know. He's the third choice goalkeeper, so it's all very new to the young man between the sticks. Right, Rory Bryan and Bon Scott not available for this one. Cool, rise as well, heads it forward. It's a second go, avoids the sliding challenge, can't avoid the second one, it was a good one. Oh, yeah. He's hyping up in the pre-game, Joey, about two sides who love to play a bit of football, love to attack. Unfortunately, they've only been attacking each other. It's only in the last 10 minutes or so. We were wondering about the rust and all of that sort of stuff, but... At the very least, it's obvious that these two sides want that Doherty Cup to come home with them. They want their name on the trophy. Hume for the second time. Avondale for the first time. Challenge is sliding in. That was a good one. Mazzarini certainly let Valentini know about it. Yeah. Chance for him to throw something in long. Liam Boland, the tall target. That's where it's headed. Tries to flick it on. And the comfortable collection for Trenkowski. Looks it along the ground to nobody in particular. Probably had a bit more time there to do something with it if he wanted, did Matt Reid. He just took it a bit of an awkward bounce and he had a player coming towards him, so if his first touch wasn't spot on, he might have been in a spot of trouble. I can understand, especially due to all the pent-up aggression in this game, while he, while he decided to half volley that one into the stands. That one... He's not oh, yes, his intended yes. target. We've had a lot of long switches attempted that haven't gone to plan today. Jerski swarmed three players around him. In the end, Gardner's going to cut out the intended pass. With a cool old Bingham's in the middle, giving something to chase. Iron Mayan will get there first and just watch it go over the line. We 
can see the security guards on the far side of the pitch springing into action. No better indication at CB Smith Reserve that half time is imminent. Strong sliding challenge there from Mitch Cooper. Vanuatu captain Mitch Cooper. Better stories, Mitch Cooper was kept at a youth international level by Australia. Decided to declare for Vanuatu. And six caps for five goals for the Pacific Nation. Decent return. First spell in international football. Don't imagine he will be able to make too many trips recently. Now Ocheng into the book. Valentini was sent crashing to earth, but he bounced up immediately. It be a case of Valentini immediately knew that one was going to produce a yellow card and he didn't need to make sure Bavkar was, saw it. And it's also become a question of uh, Valentini proving he's tough enough to stand up to this attempted intimidation. And heavy tackles that are flying in on him but plenty of spot fires all over the park for Bafka to deal with An unenviable task yeah, on cup final day I see his pass is poor Cooper will get there in front of it but he can't oh, keep it in what always strikes you about him City is how hard their attacking players work their midfielders their wingers closing people down trying to force those errors I see it will play it out but Hilly is not going to be able to keep it in well there we go and referee Adam Bavkar says that is enough. Half time here at CB Smith Reserve and plenty of fracas, plenty of feeling. Unfortunately, not many goals. Make sure you stay tuned to the stream as myself and Josh Parrish, we're going to head down to ground level and we'll have a full half time show to take you through all the action for this one. Stay with us.
Welcome back to CB Smith Reserve, where it is heating up. My co-host Joey Lynch has ditched the jacket. Josh Parrish here, a nil-nil game, but pretty eventful. I mean, yeah, well, it is rather well, direct sunlight there that we are in the cherry picker, but yeah, it's a lot of feeling in this one, Josh, a lot of spot fires. Uh, referee Adam Bavkari was trying to let play go as much as possible, but in the end, just had to start dishing out the cards at the end because both of these sides... <sighs> Either they're in a bad mood or they really, really want this Doherty Cup, don't they? Well, two injuries as a result of some of those heavy collisions. One for Josh Bingham. He was able to shake that off, trying to press the young goalkeeper Mayan Mayan and coming off second best. Really scary moment for Avondale. The very beginning of the match there. And then Yusuf Ahmed replaced due to a hamstring problem with Yazid Saeed coming on. So uh, it's been a story of two teams with uh, maybe some pent-up lockdown aggression, Joey. Uh, it, it's been entertaining, uh, I will say that. I mean, both sides really, you'd have to say on the balance of play, Avondale have had the best of their attacks. I mean, it was really noticeable in that half just how they were quite content to let Hume's back four knock it around them. But the seconds that Hume would actually try to progress through the midfield, just Avondale's front line would swarm and make life really difficult for the side in red. And as a result of that, we increasingly saw that Hume just balls over the top, giving the likes of Bingham and Cooper something to chase, which against this Avondale back four, I know they've got a young goalkeeper, but it's an experienced back four. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. Transitional opportunities for Hume, largely down to the hard work of their wingers, Mitch Cooper and Paul Quoll put in plenty of challenges and when they win the ball in spring Hume suddenly look much more dangerous. I mean you can really see that Hume they're trying to get their wing backs forward and really give their wingers license to come inside find mm. the ball and then get things going I mean it, it has occasionally almost caught them out in when Avondale get out in transition I mean I remember one occasion where Yazid's side had acres of space to run into because Lazaridis was up the field but yeah it is empowering uh, Cooper and Kual to really put themselves about and put the Avondale defence under pressure. And if they can find a yard of space and thread something through to Bingham, we all know what he can do up front. Bit of magic here from Blake Carpenter, the nutmeg. As I said, retiring, Ochi. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Boland is always the target for those crosses, but he's usually pretty tightly marked. Indeed. I mean, they have picked him out. You have to give credit to Ellie Boland Tennant there in the mm. Hume defence as well. They have been under a lot of pressure in this one now. They probably aren't as intimidated by the Avondale front line as they might have been, given that midweek they were playing against uh, Matt Leckie and Marco Tilio and uh, Andrew Naboot. But they, they've certainly held up well and they've made the Avondale attack earn their chances as well, haven't they? Absolutely. And Hayden Tennant's been in the thick of things. A few spot fires kicking off. He's on a yellow card. They've been... Slices of cheese dished out all over the park. So a lot of players walking tight ropes in the second 45. And you would have to think that referee Adam Bavkar, he's, as we mentioned, he's tried to let things go. But at some point, as we get towards the pointy end of this one, if the sides continue to uh, aggressively uh, communicate and interact with each other as they have been doing so, he's not a saint, uh, our referee. Eventually, his patience is going to wear thin and... Some of those uh, slices of cheese, as you put it, could turn into slices of tomato. <laughs> well, we saw their advantage paid for a big challenge on Yizid, uh, sorry, uh, Yite Towns and then pulled back for the booking, kicks off again. Uh, so a few players in the wars and Liam Boland copping one square in the face. I think looking at the replay we just saw, Brandon Lawton, that strike might have been headed for the top corner. I mean, my and mine certainly thought so. I, if... Uh, Boland's head hadn't got there. He was certainly launching himself to his left, but you mentioned him before as well, Yitay Towns. Yitay Towns certainly knows that he is in a cup final. He is known for what he can do on the ball and in the attack, but defensively, he has been putting himself about today. Absolutely. He's fighting a few big challenges, and you know he's, he's really helped the side out defensively, keep up with his physical approach that the Jim City have taken. Changing the game in the second half. 
There are star attractions on both benches in Joey Katabian and Noel Bernardo. Are they the obvious game changers for you, Joey? They would have to be the obvious game changers. We've talked about it during the call, what Katabian can bring to this side. We have seen Avondale on occasion just outside the penalty area. They have been willing to just go from range and test this young Hume goalkeeper. And Katabian, he can certainly welly it if he gets any sort of proper contact on it. And for Hume... Bingham was able to return to the field with a taped knee, and they do, ha as we mentioned, have three weeks off after this, but at some point, how long can he keep going before you think, maybe we bring on Bernarda and then try something else? Bernarda, the third leading scorer in NPL Victoria this 2021 season, so he can do it. But I think for me, Josh, another consideration is the longer this game goes without a goal, the more extra time will begin to seep into the minds of Zoran Markovsky and Nick Hegarty. We must have a winner today. We will play an extra half an hour of football if we need. And if we still don't have a trophy winner after that, we will go to the dreaded penalty shootout. Ooh, and two rookie goalkeepers in a penalty shootout. We'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it, Joey. Uh, but Noel Bernarda looms as a, as a potential game changer. Uh, just how big a blow was it losing Yusuf Ahmed? Because we saw early on, Avondale were going to him time and time again down the right-hand side. He was beating players. I mean, based on those early signs, you would have say you would have said that he was odds-on for best on mm. uh, in the early stages. I mean, he was effectively keeping Valentini out of the game on the left just mm. because he was playing so well. Avondale kept looking for him. So his loss, really big one for Avondale. But Yazid Said, he's shown a few things. Hopefully he can grow into it in the second half. If you are an Avengers fan, of course, if you're a Hume fan, you probably want him to get even quieter. Um, but, yeah, huge loss. And real. hopefully he'll be all right for that FFA Cup round of 16 game in a few weeks. Fingers crossed for you, e. Ahmed. I think it's a matter of composure in the second half. Which team is willing to, to play into the feet of their midfielders? We know Mitch Cooper is always calling for it, but often... His centre-backs or the deeper midfielders have gone for the direct ball down the channel to Josh Bingham. Less risk of a turnover. Avondale the same, not always getting Trajewski involved and panicking a little bit when they have space outside the box. They're always hitting those long shots. Very few of them on target and the attacking momentum is lost. Yeah, it's certainly going to be something to watch, I think, for the second half, Josh, as we see the, the sides coming out now. Well, we'll go back to our commentary position. Can't wait for this second 45. There has to be a winner today. Who will be the hero? It's Hume City versus Avondale FC in the Doherty Cup final. Don't you dare go anywhere.
both run by Bell Views. Um, it is Avondale FC nil, Hume City nil. Avondale in blue will now be kicking from right to left of your screen. Hume City in there, all red kits, all red everything will be kicking from left to right. And Josh, as we get going once again, you predicted 3 2 at the start of this one. You're sticking with that? Absolutely not, Joe. It's been a lot more physical and a lot more risk averse than I anticipated from these two teams who usually love to attack, but the occasion of Cup Final Day can get to anyone, and uh, perhaps the rustiness plays a part. Had a lot of comments at halftime about the pitch and the state of it. I don't think it's quite as bad as it looks from our position. There, there are a few bare patches, but I don't think that really excuses some of the sides going long. And I mean, it's just the centre circle and a few patches outside the box here that are a bit bare, but it's very level. It's obviously difficult for uh, a pitch designed to be used in winter to be kept in perfect nick. Come a very, very late kickoff in the summer. No one anticipated we have to wait this long for a, a final to be played. I'm saying it won't be in use this A-League women's season, so groundskeepers mm. won't have been working to get it ready for that. As we see now, free kick, one by Avondale on their left flank. Jesse standing over it. Carpenter's yeah, there as well, but it will be former yeah, Macedonia yeah, Youth International. Little Hume City Junior. Strajewski turned down a contract from Sydney FC because he wanted to try his luck in Europe. Ended up in Portugal for a while. Now he's sending this free kick in for Avondale. Tennant gets his head on it. And Hillier will watch it roll over the line for a corner. Not only is he a Hume City junior, Joey, but as one of the homegrown players who graduated into the first team before he stints overseas in Portugal, he's actually got his photo on the wall at ABD Stadium in the club rooms. Don't know if they'll tear that one down if he scores today. Look at this, crowding the six-yard box. This is the Avondale signature play off the set piece. High, looping in towards the back peg, headed back in! Ever, ever so close to the opening goal there from Valentini. Exactly the same set piece they used to score the opener against Port Melbourne in the semi-final. Drawing all the attention to the front stick and leaving Valentini one-on-one -on -one at the back. That may well have been goal bound before Birhan Elibol got just an outstretched toe on it. Now another one comes in and then Treskov. Trenkowski comes to punch, but Rihanna Babka has found an infraction beforehand so it will be a free kick for Hume just time seemed to pause briefly there as Valentini let it off and excellent intervention to keep it out shades of James Robinson's famous header in <laughs> the A-League semi-final that looping cross goal from the back stick no such hero status for Stefan Valentini just yet still have a lot of football left in this one at minimum around another 40 minutes perhaps another 70 if neither of these sides can find a breakthrough we'll bring you through the full game here on the football victoria facebook and youtube pages bowler coming under tons of pressure and again you take towns he's been the real ball winner today for avondale coming forward strong challenge however coming in there from gardner Saeed, the pressure from Kuo. Lawton's coming in there as well. No, oh, sorry, that was Cooper. Hey, hey, hey. bit of time. Carpenter out here on the left. Keep it, Blakey, keep it. Trying to thread the needles. Petrochewski can't work it. Strong sliding challenge from Basia. Does enough to keep Bingham from collecting. Reed finds Basia in the middle of the park. Carpenter. 
Valentini to his left, Rajeski in front of him. In the end, he was looking for Bolands, but the pass was poor. That was the pass he was looking for. He waited way, way too long to play. Carpenter. Goes down. Foul will be called on Bowler. Carpenter probably made that look a lot worse than it actually was. Yeah, exactly the same position they had the free kick in earlier and maybe Carpenter having won it. Mark. James Riccobene, the more experienced teammate, has pulled rank and could well be his left foot with the outswinger away from Trenkovsky's grasp. Matt Reed, an obvious target. The centre-back dangerous offset pieces. In swinger, sent in by Trzeciewski towards the back post, but it's going to fly high of everybody. Matt Reed was anticipating the reverse. A bit disappointed with that set piece being wasted by Trzeciewski. Of course, if you, if you do go with the in swinger, there's a chance it'll miss everybody and go in. Especially with a young goalkeeper. Pretty much how Hume scored, not off a set piece, but in open play through Andy Brennan in the semi-final. Missed everybody. Silly turnover and Boland doesn't quite get the first touch he was looking for. Not a lot of time in there as Hume tried to play through the midfield. That Avondale press... Coming to the four again as they'll win the ball out there on their right flank. Hillier getting up for the throw in. Points one way. And this one will looking like it will go long. Trajeski in the penalty area. Have to be careful to Hume. Trajeski looking for an angle in on goal and cross come shot will scoot across the face and go out for a goal kick. Does try those killer balls often. Trajeski doesn't need much backlift to whip across in across the six yard box, but evaded everyone on that occasion. Look how narrow Hume are playing here. In the end, that drifted out with the wind across the touchline, but not so much wingers as inside forwards. Ball and Cooper. Carpenter under pressure, just knocks it forward. And the ball. It's the cool. Bowler plays it forward to Bingham, gets it back. Played into space. Gardner's chasing it, but so is Rick Benet. And Mayan Mayan eventually comes away with it, the young goalkeeper. Good positioning from the young man. And in the end. Bowen's just fallen on top of Ella Ball there. Maybe you got a tug, maybe you didn't, but another free kick chance for Avondale, and they've played it quickly. Towns. Back to Rick Benet. Cooper closing down the angles. Just finds Carpenter. Cooper again pressing forward. Does all so much work up front as Cooper, and he's going to be rewarded. Carpenter. Showing the good endeavour to come back and clean up his own mess. I feel for Carpenter there. He did not have a midfielder presenting in the obvious space close by him. He just didn't have an option and he was forced to turn back and then he turned it over and, and worked hard to stop the attack. So that really wasn't Blake Carpenter's fault there. Kual does well to turn as Kual. Can he find a teammate in the middle? Kual. Basio gets a foot on it. Just takes one too much, one touch too many, I should say. Poor Quoll. Could have slid it across to Bingham, who had a scary of space at the front at the front post, but I think he was looking at the ball and not at his teammate. in the world for Ellie Bowl and then he'll play it forward and that's when you see Avondale swarm after that first pass we talked about pressing triggers and how high they were going to 
engage Hume, and I think you just got your answer there. Nightmarish for Hume with any attempts to play through the midfield. And it's another Avondale throw in after their good defensive pressure. It's interesting with Ellie Ball. I think when he has time to think about where he's going to pass the ball, he hesitates. Whereas in close quarters, we've seen him with some very deft touches. Only five appearances on the team sheet at a senior level this year for Ellie Ball. And he's only 19. I'm not sure Hume really appreciated that advantage from Bavka. Cooper trying to draw his attention to the kick he received in the Achilles. Carpenter looking for Boland. Ali Ball bursts through to intercept. And Gardner goes down and wins a free kick. Pressure relieving that one. Unnecessary foul. Booted forward. Intended for Bingham to give chase. Relatively comfortable clearance for Avondale in the ends, but Hume will get the throwing. It's, it's hardly pretty, but Gardner going over the top has been a relatively successful strategy as a press, pressure reliever. Ching trying to hustle and bustle his way through, and in the end he does enough to win a free kick. It takes courage in this sort of a game to, to play through the lines in midfield rather than resorting to turning the opposition's defence around and chasing. This is the conundrum facing both teams and both coaches. How much do you risk in possession? It's a great ball. Cool, just trying to play it over the top there for the run of Gardner. Bit of extended period of possession perhaps here for Hume to maybe do something. Lawton. Forced to go back to his goalkeeper, Lukas Trinkowski. Finds his captain, Tenen. Watching. Under an immediate pressure from Carpenter, which forces him to just go back to Tenant. Well, again, he'll play it forward. Said does well to turn, loses his man. And Bowler coming in. That's an excellent sliding challenge from Bowler. But then the pass intended for Gardner, maybe not as good. Gets a second goal at it. Cool was too busy appealing for the free kick. Didn't see the ball come in. We'll give Avondale a chance to perhaps break quickly. Pace quickening just a little bit here now as Hume come forward. Bingham's waiting in the area. Stead Gardner will just turn around and find Bowler. Now the ball will come in and can't find anybody. And Avondale will get the goal kick. Mitch Cooper, the target of some close attention, shall we say. There's repeated fouling on the same player. Of course, you can give a, a yellow ticket regardless of who's committed those repeat fouls. If it's a team strategy, the last person to foul will get the yellow card. So something for Bavka to watch now, given it's been a few times where he's played advantage. Someone's gone straight through the back of Mitch Cooper. Said, Hans Bassia, Towns. Sorry, Markovsky screaming his team to switch the ball. They found Said. And then Said. Beaten by the bounce there. <laughs> It's a lot of spin on that ball. And now time for uh, what looks like a pl platoon swap yeah, for Hume City. Three players entering the fray for Hume. So it will be Alex Walter, Helmut Bosdugan, and, well, the danger man that we identified, Nahul Bernada, entering the fray. What a super sub to have at your disposal. It's Gardner coming off for Noel Bernada. Qual withdrawn for Walter. And the fourth official checking his paperwork to see who Umut Bozduan, a bit of a, a cult favourite here at Hume, will be replacing. Looks like Ben Bowler coming off as well. So a lot of changes in the midfield. And we will get Bernada and Bingham on the pitch mm. at the same time. 
Well, that's tasty because Bernardo always played his best football for Danny Nong Thunder when he was playing off a target man as opposed to having to play with his back to goal. When he can turn a face goal and dribble, Bernardo is lethal. Bingham trying to slide a pass through to Walter, who we should mention Walter. No slouch in the goal scoring area himself. Mid season addition to Hume. Had 14 goals for the Glenorchy Knights in Tasmania in 2020. Wonder if uh, he's crossed paths with the ETA Towns before in junior football. Every chance. Seems like every one of those Tasmanian products seems to know each other. Towns, good, good mates with Nathaniel Atkinson of Melbourne City, of course. Here he is, Walter. Good feet. To the left, and now Hume can get some men in the middle and coming in low across the ground. And Reed had to be good, and he was. Was Dugan? Chance for him to get a touch. I swap positions a lot, so it's a little difficult to keep track. But it looks like Bozduan's playing as one of the two holding midfielders. It's a straight swap for Bowler there. Cooper's come centrally. Might have a chance to be involved deeper in the build-up, and Bernardo and Walter, the wingers. Bernardo on the ball now, desperately trying not to get his pocket picked, and in the end, Avangel just line up and start kicking. Well, and they'll win the throw-in. Can't accuse him of a lack of persistence there. Noel Bernardo. Bernardo, one of these new additions signed for the this cup run from Hume, not actually guaranteed to be heading to, for Hume in 2022 yet. Yeah, his name has been linked to a number of different clubs, I believe. It's hot property. The Thunder. And why wouldn't he be after his performances this season? There's also trials with the Central Coast Mariners and Newcastle Jets during the off-season, but just so hard for these international NPL players to get a look in battling perceptions, both of being an NPL player and an international with limited spots on the roster. Big shoes to fill replacing Brandon Barnes at Danny Thunder, but he did it with a plum. A team that wasn't always playing on the front foot. Completely different styles of players, of course. Scored that memorable goal against Green Gully. Oh, incredible. Just... Overhead kick from outside the box. Chipped the goalkeeper who was off his line. Brastia, playing it forward. Towns, twisting and turning, keeps possession, now looks up and facing goal and tries to flick it over the top. Get another go uh, on Towns, but that's a strong challenge from Walter. Hospital pass from Cooper there. Being him on his heels. Carpenter, Valentini steaming in, Valentini round one, goes down. No penalty. And it's a dive too, he's going to go into the book. See, that's a big call from Babka, but he was absolutely certain. And honestly, from our angle, it looks like the right one. No contact. I mean, you can argue that maybe Valentini was protecting himself, anticipating the contact and trying to dodge it. Adam! But you don't get penalties for anticipation. No. Got to take the whack. And Zoran Markovsky does not share our view. Apologies to any kids in cars watching. He's going to go into the book as well for his trouble. Standing up for his star player. Bessart Barisha areas talking about being able to see the screen. No instant replays for us up here on the cherry picker, but yeah. chance for all of you at home to maybe go back and rewind that one and have a look at it. Uh, your, your verdict will be uh, more accurate than ours, I suspect. In the end, none of our verdicts matter, as it is the referee Adam Bavko with a call as he indicates for play to resume. Oh, a bit of a specky there from Blake Carpenter. He hung up. It will be an Avondale throw in. I mean, that decision only turns the, the intensity up on this one. I imagine Hume players will be giving Valentini a bit of stick for going down like that. That's it. Finds the man that was just booked for simulation, Valentini. Lawton applying the challenge. Marcia, the pressure from Cooper. Mikabene can't control it. Has to get rid of it quickly as a result. 
Lawton plays it forward. Reed, nobody in particular, and it will make its way all the way through to Lucas Trenkowski. Starting today in place of Big Mike, Michael Weir, who, as we mentioned in the pre-game show, is now with the Newcastle Jets. Congratulations to him. I mean, long, long overdue, overdue for the outstanding keeper at this level in the country, I would say. Certainly in Victoria. Jack Duncan is no doubt a lovely bloke, but no doubt a few NPL Victoria fans hoping that Weir gets his opportunity in A-League men sooner rather than later. Don't sit on the fence, Joey. We're team Weir. Forza NPL. Two balls are on the field. It's ignored by Walter. Steaming forward is the Tasmanian. Has options in the middle. In the end, kind of just put that ball straight on the chest of Rikabane, who deflected it towards his keeper, who had to get down low to his right, but kept it out. Not sure if Rikabane knew which way to face on that awkward ball and very nearly handballed it. Cooper directing traffic there, telling Walter where he wanted him to go. Ilya, looking forward, finds Boland. You take Towns, making the overlapping run. First time pass to Trajewski, picked out. Said battling with Cooper. And then the sliding challenge. Good contribution from Bernardo, but it will be a turnover. Ooh. Absolute scramble at the moment. <laughs> Real intensity out there and nearly uh, knocking a block off a spectator. Be aware if you're standing on the fence line. Pretty it's decent crowd, you'd have to say, has made their way to CB Smith as well, Josh. Yeah, I mean, with this uh, rescheduled game, of course, always difficult to promote when there's such late notice on... Uh, putting this all together. I think the clubs have done a good job to make sure everyone knows it's on. And the atmosphere is really building in this second half particularly. Cooper plays the ball over the top for Bingham. Got Walter steaming into the penalty area. Instead he's going to try to find Ocheng. He collides with Carpenter. Ooh, Barcia. High boot there. Gives away the free kick. He'll argue the point, but I don't think if he watches his back, he'll have many complaints. Yeah, certainly a high foot from the Argentinian. No arguments from us anyway. It's this Doherty Cup final. The, the final uh, senior NPL men's action for the season. We still have the semi-finals and final of the Nike FC Cup to come for the women's NPL. Four sides remaining in that one. You can catch that on Football Victoria's Facebook and YouTube pages, live and free as well. Now, Cooper curls the ball in. Players arriving. And the infraction is found. So you say Towns fouled there by Vietnam Ellibol. will push on the shoulders, I believe. Got already got the height advantage there. Seems unnecessary from Vietnam. I believe they're Hume fans in the back of the stands. Spring to life once again. Great to have some active support here. Always livens up the occasion. Or as they're known in, or as they're known in most places around the world, Josh, just support. It's just fans. <laughs> Cooper trying to control the bouncing ball. And he beat his man, but he couldn't beat the advancing Reed. Reed trying to thread the eye of a needle. Valentini gets on the end of it. Trying to find players in the middle. Was looking for Towns. Just Hume swarming, getting bodies in the way. Barcia. He can find a bit of space to operate in. And then he's going to maybe just tee up a speculative effort. It was always rising. Probably wouldn't have had the power if it was on target. 
This is something we spoke about at halftime, Joey. All these speculative long-range shots from Avondale aren't really doing them any favours. They've got numbers forward. Carpenter overlapping, screaming for the ball. They can really play Avondale. They can work an opening even against a set defence and shooting from that kind of range, especially with a goalkeeper like Trent Kofsky, who, yes, he's inexperienced, but he's shown himself already to be a good shot stopper with good reach. And Seems we, like a let off for their opposition. And as we did mention, he, he was playing against Matthew Leckie and Andy Naboot uh, just a few days ago. So the intimidation factor, probably not what it could have been. Carpenter finds Reed. Bingham keeping him company. Hillier. Snyder in his face, he gets it to Towns. Carpenter found by Bastia and then cuts inside. Still going is Carpenter, trying to outside of the boot effort in the path of Boland's intercepted. And now is this the break? Bernardo steaming forward for Hume. Plays it out to Bingham on the left. Waltz is there, so is Bernardo. If Bingham can get it in, but. He's incredibly well marshalled. Towns not giving him any angle for the cross and he's forced to go backwards. Play will continue. In the end, perhaps Avondale can get out quickly. Boland's given something to chase. He's through, Liam Boland, is this the moment he's brought down? Hayden Tennant's on a yellow card. He has to be off. I he's mean, that's got, a straight He's already red. walking. He's already walking off. Hayden Tennant knew what he was doing. He knew that Boland would have scored if he didn't intervene. So the Hume captain, we mentioned it almost as soon as he got the yellow card, Josh. That took the professional mm. foul away. Well, in the end, it didn't. But the professional foul, foul he'll pay the price. Hume down to 10. Avondale with a free kick in a dangerous area and the wind figuratively and literally at their backs. I mean, in the end, the yellow card didn't matter at all. It was a straight red denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity. It wasn't a footballing tackle. It was outside the box. It was only one decision for Adam Babka to make. And in the end, he didn't even have to bring out the second yellow card. It was a straight red for a player already on a yellow. So, you know, that booking, although it loomed large over this second half, Ended up not being a factor. You could argue the captain taking one for the team. Or has he left his team in the lurch? Much of it depends on the outcome of this free kick. I might have to say that Boland's turn there to get rounds mm. tenant. Foul wouldn't have been needed if it hadn't been for that excellent mm. turn from Boland. And now he's standing over it. I mean, he's just so dangerous when he gets the ball to his feet. He can act as a playmaker. He can spin defenders. And he models himself on his hero, Harry Kane. Being a Spurs mega fan and... Uh, Hopefully not 2021, Harry Kane, <laughs> at least at club level. Well, doesn't mind a dead ball as the uh, England striker. Liam Bowen, much the same. This is no contest. Here we go. Hume Wall in effect. 17-year-old goalkeeper Trenkowski in there. Liam Boland looks to be taking it. hit this with real power. Boland, Boland, over the bar. I'm surprised, Joe, I have to say. He thought he'd put his foot through that. Instead, he went for a more delicate chip over the wall to try and find the top corner. And from that range, it is difficult for the keeper to get across. I was actually expecting him to completely hammer that one past the wall rather than over it. So difficult to get it up and down from that sort of range. So Hume lives to fight another day, but they will have to do so down a man and down a captain. Preparing a change too. Bozduan filling in at centre back in the meantime. Substitute being put through the set piece manual, final preparations. Avondale still having only made one change, so they've got players in reserve. And that change, an injury enforced one, so mm. Coach Zoran Markowski had set substitutes lined up. They haven't come yet. 
Certainly advantage Avondale playing this sort of passing game against 10 players. They should be able to expose Hume. This is a, a training drill for them now. Attack versus defense, upper man. They just need to get their combinations right. Ball whipped in towards the near post. Minkowski collects. Well, Zoran Minkowski, he, he knows what it takes to win a Doherty Cup. Not as a coach, perhaps, but definitely as a player. Well, this tournament had a long break in the late 90s and the early 2000s. It was played once under a different name in 2004. And Crazy Johns, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was, it was the Crazy Johns Cup. And it was Zoran Markovsky who lifted the trophy. A 1-0 win for Green Gully, the Cavaliers, as they were then known. Not only was he in that side, but assistant coach Jeff Fleming was there. And, unbelievably, on the bench today, Phil Riccobene, still playing, is in that 2004 Doherty Cup winning team as well. He's very young as Bernardo goes to work. On the left, Cooper in the middle. Sends it around the corner, headed clear. And now you can potentially also see, perhaps, Josh, just some of these Avondale players notice that they're with Trajewski just... The, the run's a bit more laborious. They haven't played a proper competitive fixture in so many months. And if this one was going to go into extra time, oh, crunching challenge, but a fair one there. <laughs> and Lazaridis is going to let Valentini know all about that one. Boland's sticking up for his battle. The theatrics from both players, I think, tells you everything you need to know there, Joey. Where's the next Olympic Games? Do they need synchronized? Like, that was mirror images. <laughs> it's like they rehearsed that. Well, the medical team's on. I'm not sure how much contact there really was. Joey Katabian is preparing to come on. Histrionics. Certainly a lot of feeling, isn't it? It was Boland who took exception to Lazaridis for screaming abuse at Valentini when he was down on the deck. It was a heavy challenge, but the referee one. deemed it a legal one. He did play the ball. I mean, there is such thing as excessive force, of course, and if it is a dangerous foul, then the referee can always blow it up, but... Lazaridis and Boland still on the turf. I mean, this is always a bizarre one for the referees. Just sort of common sense prevail, and we give a yellow or two and uh, continue on with our lives, or... Is it indeed violent conduct from one or both players? I mean, a headbutt is a red card offence, but whether... What if they're both going for a headbutt at the same time? Simultaneous risk? <laughs> I guess so. That would bring Hume down to nine and Avondale to ten. Boland has certainly been... Well, both on that occasion, but also in play, has been throwing his weight around a bit as of late. Here you go, yellow card for Lazaridis, and you imagine the same will be true. However, Boland's... Red card. Red card. So, in the end, I'm imagining that Bavka has booked Lazaridis for the histrionics over the top of Valentini, and he has sent Boland off for a headbutt. So, it was, I mean, consultation with the assistant referee, and, and Boland has been deemed to be the, the player who who was the aggressor who made the headbutting motion. So He can't believe it. I mean, that's a very controversial moment. And now both sides playing with 10 men. Boland still can't believe it. Head in his hands. Does that suspend him for the FFA Cup? That is a very good question, Joey, to which I do not know the answer. That would be absolutely disastrous for the Avengers to not only lose Boland for the rest of this one, but potentially for their coming meeting with either Western United or the Wellington Phoenix. Oh, I mean, of course, I mean, this tournament is combined with the FFA Cup in terms of qualifiers, but then splits off into the semi-finals. So, unclear whether that suspension will carry over to the national stages. It looks go. as though Trajewski will be departing for Katabian. But if he was suspended, it was absolutely needless. I can understand wanting to stick up for your teammate and fly the flag. I mean, I think the answer to that, you know, whether 
Bolland has been hard done by or not is just don't get involved in that situation in the first place. Don't give the referee an excuse to send you off by losing your rag and getting involved in that fashion. Now it's a fascinating game because all sorts of spaces have just opened up across the field. Do both sides wait for extra time? Do they go for it now, Hume? Having thought they had to sit in with 10 players and, and try and defend the draw. Hume down a centre back. Avondale down a centre forward. My oh, my, and off his line. Bosgugan is going to come under pressure from Said. Heads it back. Does well, does Bosgugan. It looks like he's staying there in the centre back position. Bernarda dropping deep. The substitution I mentioned before just seems to be put on hold now. Perhaps the uh, red card has changed the equation for Nick Hegarty and he's now rethinking the change. Does it perhaps look like, has Yitte Towns gone into centre forward for Avondale or no, he's just playing? I think they might be playing strikerless. Vaguely without one. I mean, Joey Katabian probably the most advanced of the central players, but... Loran taking a leaf out of Pep Guardiola's play. <laughs> a strikerless system. That wouldn't be the first time, Joey. Played Valentini as a false nine previously. Saeed is trying to find the run of Carpenter. Osdogan puts it out. Ali Turgut still keeping himself warm in that in front of that uh, Hume City dugout. Let's see if he is called upon. So, Avondale coming again. Every player bar Mayan Mayan in the Hume half. Closing up all those pockets of space that you mentioned, Josh. So, good, excellent turn there from Towns, and then he'll go down, and that is a penalty. So Yitte Towns has been up and about, he's been winning everything, and now he has also won his side a penalty. Well, if they felt hard done by with the red card for Liam Boland. Avondale have a decision go their way. This is a golden opportunity. And Stefan Valentini, the top scorer in MPL Victoria, will take charge. What did you think of the decision, Joey? Difficult to, to judge, but Trankowski's getting a bit of feedback from Hegarty. Maybe a, a scouting report on Valentini's preferred penalty routine. Well, no man in NPL Victoria or Victoria's games in the FFA Cup have scored more goals in 2021 than Stefan Valentini. And now, here in the second half of the 2021 Dockery Cup final, the attacker has the chance to put the Avengers in the box seat for their first ever piece of major silverware. Valentini versus Trenkowski. The Marquee versus the Rookie. And it is the Marquee attacker that wins the battle. The Zen Pose has Stefan Valentini just won the Doherty Cup for Avondale FC. Well, Zen, a little ironic given the circumstances surrounding this game. It's been anything but, Joey, two red cards. But Valentini able to keep a cool head in trying circumstances and smash that penalty into the top left hand corner. Unsavable. Absolutely unsavable. Got to credit the work of Yute Towns though, winning the pen. Looking back at the replay, it does seem to be the right call. A, a trip from Brandon Lawton, a lazy leg. He's felt the contact. Yute Towns and has every right to go down. And finally, the deadlock is broken. And now it looks as though the Hume bench will spring into action, but it will be Lockie Weir coming on. Signed mid-season from the Melbourne Knights. And now Hume, they are going to have to sell out if they are to get back into this one. As we mentioned, three-week holiday regardless coming up for them. So 
can afford to push the boat out. Cooper heads it back inside to Bingham. Cooper does well to keep it in and find Ocheng, and then Ocheng back to Cooper. Walter coming forward, big collision there. In the end, the judge to have come off Hume's Tasmanian. That change will take place now, it looks like. Lockie Weir, brother of Michael, who's since flown the coop and signed that contract with the Newcastle Jets. Just hold off for a minute. Ching sends it back. Another high foot from Mario Barcia. Bernardo rolling around on the ground, but he seems to be okay. The two Argentinians coming together. That's the way of things in South America. Now the substitution is made. Here we Lazaridis go. Lazaridis departs. Straight swap. I mean, uh, Lazaridis, you could say, is uh, nursing a bit of a head knock. <laughs> so, sensible to replace him. Well, if you... Maybe Nick Haggerty not wanting to risk having to go down to nine. He's on a yellow card. He's obviously feeling this one. Cooper swings it in. Sent straight back. Cooper gives Bernardo something to chase. Bernardo does well, working against Valentini. Valentini goes down to ground. The referee waves play on, and now Saeed is in acres of space because he was offside. <laughs> From my angle, it, it was a very tight one there, but the... Flag going up a little bit late. At least the whistle. Oh, Valentini nursing a knock on the back of the neck. Or is it sunburn? Can't be sure today. We're sending him off so they can get play going. Lucky Weir's not going to let Valentini get the treatment unless it involves his side temporarily having a one-man advantage. So 10 versus 9 now in favour of Hume, just, just for the time being. Koski sends it long. We will watch it roll out. But, I mean, as we saw in these sides, regular season meeting earlier this year, Josh, late drama is always possible. Cooper. Bingham, bit of one-touch football. Snuffed out by the Avengers. Saeed leaves it behind. Keeps it in, tries to use his speed to beat Ocheng. In the end, just too many human bodies in the way there. And young Saeed, Renata now. Looking against Hillier. Renata, got the feeling he wanted a corner there, but he's going to have to go to work once again. Reed at his back. And now he'll win the corner. He's lively, isn't he? Noel Bernardo. New acquisition, of course. With a cup run and transfer target for many clubs in this competition come next season. Who can secure his services? Will he stay at Hume? We're not sure yet. Take it quickly. Cooper to Banana. Back to Cooper. Opens up the angle. Drills it in there. And header did look like had a chance there from Alex Walter. Again, wants the gun, plays it out to the left. Lucky Weir plays it forward. Walter giving chase. Sends it back in the danger area. Bingham can't get there before it's cleared away by Avondale. Nelly Ball. Koski sends it forward. Ahead of Yutai Towns, Ocheng sends it back. Just for offside from the Avengers bench, nothing given. 
Avondale preparing a defensive change. Phil Riccobene, the veteran. He was there back in 2004 with his head coach. Has another chance to lift the Doherty Cup. To join his brother, James Riccobene, on the field. Mm. C and double for Riccobene. It looks like Valentini will be the man replaced, according to the board. And does that board indicate that we'll, we will have five minutes of added time? Looks like it. They're preparing the stoppage time and plenty of time for Hume City to launch some attacks. Of course, that board not gone up just yet. Avondale will be hoping they can hold this one out, lest if they do cop up an equaliser, that's the prospect of extra time without Liam Boland or Stefan Valentini on the field. I think that five may have been left over from a previous substitution, Joey. It's since been turned over. As we see Hume preparing to make another substitution as well, it'll be Theo Markalis coming on. So an attacking move for Hume, as you'd expect. Carpenter. Trying to work against Lord, former Adelaide United youth working as the former Melbourne Victory youth. And they're all tied up there down there. Leo Markellis comes on. Lawton off, and that's another attacking weapon on the park for him now. They have to go for it. figure Theo Markalis both for his NPL exploits and his time with victory as well signed by Ange Postacoglu coming back from Spain it's famously at the Valencia Youth Academy and became good friends with Isco a bit of a clean up here for Alex Walter who's bleeding blood all over his face it's to be a cut lip Tabian, tends to take it to the corner. He's going to lose the ball. Cooper has not given up on this game yet. Plays it forward for the newly introduced Michaelis. He'll get it to Bingham. Bingham sends it central. Bernard is there. So too is Lockie Weir. The latter gets on it. Brings it inside. And now he's gone from range. Barcia spotted Trenkovsky of his line and the youngster has no doubt had a heart attack as he sprints back to keep that one out but you can see this now just humor just going to start throwing bombs long ball from Trenkovsky headed clear we talked about Barcia's long range efforts being a little little judged that was probably the best of them <laughs> came from inside his own half Bernardo Challenge and forces Bostugan to clean. No, not Bostugan, apologies. Forces Hume to clean it up. Walter back on the park now with the bandage around his chin. Flapping in the breeze in the back of his head. I think it's a rush job from the medics there. They just need all their players on the park, all 10 of them. Of course, two red cards in this game if you've just joined us. Is that Barcia that has gone down holding his Achilles? Tinian could have copped the knock, or he could be a professor of the dark arts. You'll never tell. <laughs> they never do in Argentina. And an Englishman, I'll refrain from commenting. <laughs> it's man to man in the box here. Breed, the only player spare. So we've got Lucky Weir for something to spill outside the area. Long throw comes in. Still scored. And a strong collection there from my and mine. Admittedly, the young goalkeeper hasn't actually had to make too many saves today. But that one was an important intervention. Doesn't have the biggest frame in the world, but he's got the height. Absolutely, he's got that reach and has a great grab from a keeper with pressure heaped on his shoulders on the eve of this one. Foster Guns attempt to play it forward, blocked. A 
Cheng. It's sent straight back by Katavian. And you can just see the divergent approaches as we head towards the end of this one, Josh. The Avengers battening down the hatches. Hume just throwing bombs. It is desperation stations for Hume City. Get the ball forward, get it forward quickly. All pretense of pretty football. If ever it was present in this game, is out the window now. Get it up to Josh Bingham. Up to Ellie Ball playing as an emergency centre forward. And Avondale have the chance to ice the game every time they win the ball and break. Basia shrugged off the knock to the Achilles. He'll just take it to the corner flag. Can't keep it in. And Hume, you can see, looking to get it going immediately. I imagine this one's going to get sent long pretty soon. Charged down by Katavian. I mean, how many tackles has Ute Towns made in that match? Uh, in that, in that matchup today against Mitch Cooper. Have to be close to best on, wouldn't they, Ute Towns? And again. We do give out the Jimmy Mackay medal post-match, as voted by the match officials. Trankowski's touch. He's got the touch of a goalkeeper, does the 17-year-old, and it almost let him down there. And that is it, a famous moment in Avondale history. After flattering to deceive for so many years, the Avengers have their first piece of major silverware. They take the 2021 Doherty Cup, defeating Hume City 1-0. Stefan Valentini with the penalty to win it in the second half. It was fierce, it was physical, it was spiteful. And in the end, a famous win for the Avengers. Huge moment, and you can see it's relief more than anything on the face of those Avondale players. Their talisman striker, Liam Boland, will be more relieved than anybody once he hears the news in the change rooms after his red card left them in the lurch. Two reds in this match. It was not the footballing exhibition that we might have been hoping for, but it was thrilling in a more gladiatorial fashion. And Avondale scrap and claw their way to a 1-0 win that I think they just about deserve. So Coach Zoran Markovsky, he lifted it as a player, and he will now lift the 113-year-old trophy as a coach, guiding Avondale to that elusive piece of silverware. Giving them all the momentum in the world needed to head into that FFA Cup game against A-League men opposition in the coming weeks. There's been so many heartbreaks for this club, for this team in major finals. Look back to the Heidelberg Grand Final in 2018, losing on penalties to Bentley Greens in 2019 had chances to win that one in extra time as well. Denied the Premiership in the same year by a late Sean Ellis goal in front of their own fans as well. So many near misses for this group who've had the chokers tag around their necks. And they can shake free of it now. Finally, they've won something. It is a beautiful historic trophy and a big moment for Avondale FC that they will surely treasure. A young group who's matured through the journey under Zoran Markovsky. A few older heads in there as well, the Riccobene brothers, Boland. But more than anything, it's been a big learning curve for this exciting young team. I think my, my pick for best on, Joel, you mentioned it. The guy who's been with Avondale longer than any other player in this group that has risen up the divisions, Yite Towns. I just thought he was an absolute warrior in the middle of the park today. Outstanding performance. Well, we'll begin to... You've got to get down there, Josh, for the, gr for the presentation. But famous win for the Avengers. They get around Mayan Mayan. He's going to think this senior football thing's easy. One game, one trophy. But as Josh heads down... company as he does so you can hear the cherry cricket descent absolutely pleasure joey to join you on this broadcast my services are needed elsewhere but uh 
what a feeling to get back amongst it in Victorian football. It's been too long. Josh makes his way out. Hume. Heartbreak for Hume. Losing midweek to City now. Going down to Avondale. Both by 1-0 score lines. Both in games that they would have felt that they maybe could have got something from. Losing Hayden Tennant to the red card really put them behind the eight ball. Fairly had to make, one would have thought. Boland steaming in. So they're getting ready for the presentations. Might picking up a few of our <laughs> logistical organisations. All smiles there in the Avondale huddle. As we now see Josh heading over there for the presentation. A few little more things to wrangle out, but as they do, I'll do my sign off. Joined by Josh Parrish on CoComs today. My name has been Joey Lynch. Thank you for tuning in across the Football Victoria Facebook and YouTube pages for this one. As mentioned during the call, still Nike FC Cup to come, semi finals, double header, and the final of that one. So keep your, your eyes out for that. Stay tuned for the trophy presentation after this one here at CB Smith Reserve ended. Hume City nil, Avondale one. Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I was out there, yeah. How are we going to see it? Look, let them do a presentation, let us do the live streaming. Alright, now if I run, keep this, that has to be with you, okay? So just keep it next to me. Okay. Well, maybe this might be taken. Sorry? Yes. Is your audio going? Yeah. 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 Is this the moment he's brought down? Hayden Tennant on a yellow card. He has to be off. I mean, that's he's already red. walking. He's already walking off. Hayden Tennant knew what he was doing. He knew that Boland would have scored if he didn't intervene. So the Hume captain, we mentioned it almost as soon as he got the yellow card, Josh. They took the professional foul away. And in the end, it didn't. Professional pound, foul, he'll pay the price. Hume down to 10. Hey, hey, hey. Avondale with a free kick in a dangerous area and the win figuratively and literally at the play. Red card. Red card. So in the end, I'm imagining that Babka has booked Lazaridis for the histrionics. He'll go down, and that is a penalty. So Yitz this is the rookie. And it is the marquee attacker that wins the battle. The Zen pose has Stefan Valentini just won the Doherty Cup for Avondale FC. Well, Zen.
here today at CB Smith Reserve. Can we please have one more round of applause for both teams who put on a show for us today? Have to wait so long for this game, but how good is it to have football back? Here with us today to present the awards, we have former Socceroo Josh Kennedy. Firstly, yeah, round of applause for Josh Kennedy. First of all, we would like to thank the match officials, without which this game would not have been possible. Big thank you to Adam Bavka, Jackson Landy, Astro Sakalis, and Yanni Zizis. Particularly busy afternoon for these gentlemen. Another hand for the referees. We would now like to present the Jimmy Mackay medal to signify the player of the match as voted by the match officials. Today's player of the match is number 13, Yuto Town. game. Thanks to the referees for putting on that for us. To our boys, first championship, first cup, first trophy, first of many, that's for sure. Congratulations, UK. Very, very well played. Now we'd like to invite today's runners-up to collect their medals. Big hand for Hume City. for Hume City, a great campaign, a great run in the FFA Cup as well. Give themselves proud against Melbourne City this week. Now I'd like to invite the head coach of Hume City up to say a few words. Big hand for Nick Hegarty. Um, yeah, congratulations to Avondale. Finals are always uh, decided on either a bit of quality or mistake um, and again the contest today was, was pretty up there so congratulations enjoy your night out and we'll see you next week and now for the champions of the 2021 Doherty Cup Avondale FC we start with number 44 Mayan Mayan Number two, Scott Hillier. Yeah. Number three, James Riccobene. Yeah. Number five, Matt Reed. Yeah. Number 14, Blake Carpenter. Yeah. Number 25, Mario Barcia. Yeah. Number 18, Christian Trudeski. Yeah. Number 13, Ute Towns. Yeah. Number 22, the goal scorer, Stefan Valentini. Yeah. Yeah. 
You're in the stands right now for number nine, Liam Bollins. Number 11, Yusuf Ahmed. And we'll go through. And so as well, number 15, Adam L. Hyatt. Number 17, Phil Riccobene. Rico! Number 19, Brandon Lundy. Number 26, Guy Spiteri. Number 29, Yazid Saeed. And finally, number 33, Joey Kitabi. And now I'd like to invite the head coach of Avondale FC to say a few words. Big hand for Zoran Markovsky. First of all, I just want to thank James and the City Boys. I think um, what a great contest to lift up to a cup final. And for me, we probably have some here in the pod when we're just 18 and 19. I don't know whether you have to talk to your boys' legs and speak. Um, uh, to my boys, I think um, it's a long time coming, this, this trophy. So we've been uh, preparing for this for three years and two COVID seasons. So we're really going to enjoy the night tonight. To all our fans and our sponsors, this one's for you as well. So thanks, guys. Let's go! Hey, you know, you know, you know. You know. I'd now like to invite Zoran Markovsky and the captain. Scott Hillier and the elder statesman, Phil Riccobene, to lift the winning trophy. Come He's already walking off. Hayden Tennant knew what he was doing. He knew that Boland would have scored if he didn't intervene. So the Hume captain, we mentioned it almost as soon as he got the yellow card, Josh. That took the professional foul away. Well, in the end, it didn't. But the professional foul, foul he'll pay the price. Hume down to 10. Avondale with a free kick in a dangerous area. And the wind figuratively and literally at if this one was going to go into extra time Ooh, a crunching challenge but a fair one there <laughs> and Lazaridis is going to let Valentini know all about that one Boland's sticking up for his battle the theatrics from both players I think tells you everything you need to know there Joey 
Where's the next Olympic game in play? Has been throwing his weight around a bit as of late. Here we go, yellow card for Lazaridis, and you imagine the same will be true. However, Boland's red card. Red card. So in the end, I'm imagining that Bavka has booked Lazaridis for the histrionics. Excellent turn there from Towns, and then he'll go down, and that is a penalty. So Yitz this is the rookie. And it is the marquee attacker that wins the battle. The Zen Pose has Stefan Valentini just won the Doherty Cup for Avondale FC. Well. <laughs> Can we get rid of this? Move this.